is all over the world, much more so than before. Instead of being local, now it's through the internet. We also have um, in the social structure exactly the same things happening. Um, in the old days, it used to be the um, top-down authoritarian type of um, structure, and with the um, Web 2 and also the social uh, grassroots movement, is actually coming from the bottom, uh, bottom up. So it's totally different. It's uh, more decentralized and it's more true to the true democracy that is coming up in this social transformation. And they're happening simultaneously and they both uh, reinforce each other. So, um, so I, uh, I actually have further um, hypothesis that I came up myself. And what I said was that um, the internet has changed the way that we communicate and the way that we live, you know, and as powerful as it is, it is only the beginning of the uh, evolution of human communication 2.0, I call it. <laughs> and, and the internet uh, was based on the uh, uses the World Wide Web as a basis of communications. And I hypothesize that human consciousness with, um, will grow to an extent to this uh, collective consciousness that will resemble the new sphere as envisaged by Tillard de Chardin many years ago. And this human mind that is going to be global, we can tap into it to, um, into this global consciousness or the quantum field for non-communication, uh, non-local communication as proven by the most profound experiment of the 20th century. This is the Allen Aspect EPR experiment that was done in 1982. And it's, uh, I don't have time to go into that right now, but uh, it's very interesting. And that is going to tra transform society. Um, I think that's, I think I'm probably you already. I want to uh, say that, um, uh, you know, both Gene and Joe is doing an excellent work on the technology side and there's a correspondence uh, social transformation that's happening and the uh, website that I'm going to be developing is going to, you know, trying to merge these together and ho hopefully it's going to advance this uh, new transformation that's happening. William Baumgartner is, is one of the inventors we feature in the book, and uh, William's been involved in, in engineering all of his life. Uh, he was educated in Switzerland, uh, spent a, a lot of time engineering uh, Tesla technology over the last 40 years, and he's been a consummate inventor in developing a lot of prototypes, uh, various different type of energy platforms, always looking for the best combination to be able to tap free energy for use in homes and businesses and vehicles. and. Uh, uh, something in, in, that uh, William has addressed before in the question about is this suppression that has occurred in the past, is it, is it going to continue? And he's, he's told us directly, no, there's too many of us now. And we got to take that to heart. So, so basically, uh, you are the expert in North America for the Schauberger technology, Walter Russell technology, and, and we'd like to hear your own comments. You know, are these new energy technologies for real? Uh, yes. Yes, there is. Uh, I've been in uh, this uh, free energy movement for myself uh, for about, uh, I think, 35 years, on and off with uh, some success sometimes and a lot of failures on the other hand. But uh, those things happen. We learn from mistakes. And uh, uh, my mentors were Victor Schauberger and uh, uh, Walter Russell and uh, Tesla. This is what I base my, uh, my knowledge on. And uh, so uh, I don't think there's much to say uh, except that uh, I, I understand that we have tables here. And uh, if you have any questions or more in details here, about uh, the inventions and, uh, of Schauberger's and myself. And uh, so uh, I uh, will leave it with that. Thank you.
our next person I'd like to introduce is um, one of the most tenacious advocates of clean energy I know. Um, in my previous book, The Coming Energy Revolution, I wrote about Martin Berger's work with NOVA, an ocean energy company that's now named Blue Energy Canada. Martin Berger came up from Oregon to be with us tonight. Martin? Technologies, yeah, the place is raining with them. I found uh, the Davis turbine and Blue Energy's aerospace finesse kit, and uh, you know, it's no no brainer that the tides are there every day, and you know for the same. Uh, well, it first narrows here under the Lionsgate Bridge, eight knots translates to a wind force equivalent of two Hurricane Mitchells. You know, so 400 per hour wind speed, you know, density, energy densities, and stuff like that. All that stuff makes sense, but. But, but as I was trying to do the business planning and get the organizational development together, and it, I just had the, the, the observation, and it became evident that this, this thing was behaving quantumly. You know, this thing was quantum. And I, I started networking, and I had some mentors. Uh, Jean introduced me to uh, my good friend, Dr. Hazel Henderson. She introduced me to some more futurists, and I came to appreciate that people like John and Bill and uh, Schauberger, Tesla, all these people, they had the devices, they had the insights, they had the vision. Um, and so basically you could quantify the technology side of it, and capitalism, in spite of what's happened in the last little while, uh, this behaves like gravity, it's predictable, it will come to the opportunity if everything's right. But Hazel and her futurist friends were able to instill in me an appreciation for the fact that we're really in, a, in an infancy in consciousness, ourselves, in, in humanity. And we're at a critical juncture today, and I think of, there's optimism here today as well, but, but I really think you know, when you look at my background from the Cree tribe, I grew up with the Dene, and uh, there was a, a quantum integration in their consciousness. And our Western viewpoint has been a linear and a material perspective. But I guess we can cut it short. The guy's cutting me off here with time, but, but, but basically we've got six and a half billion units of consciousness firing into our shared experience called our future. And until that signal has a sufficient gravity, a quantum mass, we will not achieve or experience that future. Today is a product of that field of consciousness from a previous period. Okay, people like Gene Manning and Joel, um, they play in a, a very important role in this work. Gene's earlier book, The Coming Energy Revolution, I still get emails from people all around the world Oh, Blue Energy, and Gene Manning, you know, Energy Revolution. Uh, you have to have the possibility of a clean, harmonious future sufficiently etched and formulated in our minds before it's ever going to experience, we're ever going to experience it. And I've played the game in the corporate level, investment banking level, technology level, all those things. But when you have 10 pieces essential to do the thing, to make a difference, if, if you don't have that hundredth monkey on board, one of them will kick out, you know, you just try and force the last two together, oops, you lost three that you thought you had already had them together. So they'll behave quantumly until there's a maturation of possibility sufficiently formed. And these people are the ones that are carrying that burden. I can bring 450 technologies in my 25 years I've looked at. I've got a half a dozen here in the shirt pocket. How many do you want? There's lots of solutions here. But until people participate in something fundamental like energy, okay, we all walk in the house and flip on the switch, that's the end of the story. This is fundamental. And until you get off it and start participating, start getting informed, the internet is a wonderful, a wonderful 
resource. And, and that ultimately, I think, when we look back at this period, will be what made the difference. But it's the cutting edge work of pioneers in the consciousness of the possibility. These people did.